in some ways I agree with Manson. How far back into history will we go to punish men for the previous power imbalance between men and women? How many bands and rock stars and movies will we cancel? Because let's face it, underage groupies wanting to have sex with rock stars and celebrities goes back a millennia. What is left of music and movies if we retroactively cancel every artist who failed to live by today's standards. It also makes me wonder what is actually achieved by reversing the power dynamic rather than trying to balance it. There's so many people who have this dream of what it would be like to be up there and having all these people screaming your name. Even before you start the song, you do the first chord on the guitar. There are people who just are dying just to... Isn't that nice? Yeah, well. <laughs> and so what does that do to your head? You know, you think you're, I mean, it's obviously what we got in this for in the first place. Anybody who tells you the story of uh, wanting to impart some greater knowledge on, in, <clears throat> to humanity is really not really telling the truth. The reason we first started strumming guitars is because we wanted women and lots of them. It's, uh, and their daughters. It's great. <laughs> and probably their granddaughters. <laughs> <laughs> it's really great. Are these women misogynists because they find it humorous? It's kind of like being at a buffet where everything is laid out and you don't have to take this or this or this, but it's all there to be eaten if you want it. And so Jackie said, Jackie said that, that a lot of you, a lot of you, and I'm not making any judgments or accusations here, have little regard for women. Is that true? No, I don't think not that's at all. so at all. We worship I mean, them. Re repeat. Well, face style. <laughs> I'm brief. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Is Oprah Winfrey's entire audience misogynistic? I think, yeah. the, uh, I think the relationships that happen on the road, one night stands, if you will, are much more honest than a lot of the, let me take you out to dinner, gee, you're an interesting person. That's a lot of <laughs> crap. And the one thing, can we say that word? Crap? Yeah, sure. In that case, it's a lot of, it's a lot of crap. And this is what it is. Everybody's having the time of their lives. For girls, maybe it's a chance to be with somebody who's not going to be a dentist or a plumber. There's nothing wrong with that, but they want to spend the night with somebody who's maybe been to Paris and starts talking. But That's you, us. Yeah. Or maybe to climb the social ladder or write a book about it. One thing is for certain. You don't become a groupie to find a long-term relationship. Yeah, Jean, when, but do you find that these girls, when you take your pick, you go in the room or whatever, they meet you backstage, um, don't they think it's going to be more? I'm sure every No, girl, I don't think so. You don't th think so? I think the nicest part about it is that it's, it's very honest and it's upfront, and nobody has any false expectations of what to expect. I think it's, it's, and it's a hot. good time. It's not, it doesn't go through the, the facade of those preliminary dates when you're not interested in, in what the person wants to have for dinner. You're obviously more interested with getting dinner over with. Uh -huh. So um, this lays everything on the line, and everybody's there to have a good time. The term itself dates from the mid-1960s, but the idea of young women throwing themselves at their musical heroes dates back decades before. Elvis. Do we cancel Elvis? Probably even further. One can almost imagine a young Austrian lass frantically waving her corset as Mozart breaks into his magic flute. Anyways, we don't think about corsets in operas when we think about groupies. We think about rock and roll. Let's get to the ladies who had rock stars wrapped around their fingers. B.B. Buell. B.B. Buell was 18 when she moved to New York, became a model, and was one of Playboy's Playmates of the Month. And then, as she says, the rock stars came a-hunting. I think it went beyond infatuation. I think I was um, determined to know them and to be part of uh, the, the, the persona and the aura. Buell was romantically linked with rock and roll icons like Elvis Costello and even Mick Jagger. In 2018, she told Rolling Stone magazine that when she met Tyler, she was 18 and he was 23. But she goes on to say that her first four dates were with the other band members, which basically means she was underage. So are we going to cancel the Rolling Stones?
but she is most famous for being the mother of actress Liv Tyler. But she wasn't always Liv Tyler. When she was born, Buell told the world that long-term boyfriend Todd Rundgren was the father. It didn't come out for an astounding nine years that Liv was the result of a fiery affair with legendary Aerosmith frontman Steven Tyler, and that she had lied to protect her daughter from Tyler's rampant drug abuse. Eventually, Buell became tired of the groupie life and attempted to make it in the music world on her own merit. From 1981 on, she released a series of albums, most recently 2011's Hard Love. Although not very commercially successful, Buell remains one of the only people to experience both sides of the groupie coin, and her daughter Liv has had quite the acting career herself. I don't think it's really rocket science. I think either you're part of it or you're not. Sable Star leader of a group dubbed the Baby Groupies. Let me just fill you in on who the Baby Groupies are. They're a group of teenage high schoolers who ruled over a particular mile of Sunset Boulevard in the early 70s. Sable Star was perhaps the queen of all the groupies in the 1970s. Star became entangled in the rock and roll lifestyle at an extraordinarily young age. Iggy Pop later sang, I slept with Sable when she was 13. Her parents were too rich to do anything. By the time she was 16, still very underage, I might add, Star gave an interview stating that at various points she had been involved with Mick Jagger, David Bowie, Alice Cooper, and Robert Plant. Quite the who's who of 70s rock. Sable soon became bored with LA, moved to New York, and became enmeshed in the burgeoning punk scene there, becoming involved with Johnny Thunders and Richard Hell. Sadly, Sable's star faded later in life. By the 1980s, she had dropped out of the groupie lifestyle, moved to Lake Tahoe, and became a table game dealer before eventually succumbing to brain cancer in 2009. But when fellow super groupie B.B. Buell states that you were the groupie who, quote, every rock star in LA wanted to meet, you must have flown pretty close to the sun. We're starting to get an idea how long this list of cancelable rock stars is getting, aren't we? Anita Pallenberg. Some groupies became famous for making their way through every rock star they could get their hands on. Anita Pallenberg, however, is famous for attracting the attention of one band in particular, the Rolling Stones. In 1965, Pallenberg was a young actress when she became romantically involved with Rolling Stones guitarist Brian Jones. A two-year love affair followed, until on a trip to Morocco, Keith Richards witnessed Jones assaulting her. The Stones' other guitarist rescued Pallenberg, whisked her back to England, and began a 13-month relationship with the beautiful blonde because, of course, who could resist Keith Richards? However, their romance was not perfect by any means. Pallenberg allegedly slept with Mick Jagger, thereby completing the holy trinity of Rolling Stones. And in 1979, a 17-year-old who Pallenberg was having an affair with was shot dead in an apparent suicide while in bed with her. Well, Pallenberg wasn't underage when she slept with all the band members and was abused. She was nearly 40 when she was dating, sleeping with, whatever you call it, a 17-year-old. After her relationship with the various Stones ended, Pallenberg continued to act, appearing in made-for-TV movies until after a lifetime of drug abuse, she died of hepatitis C in 2009. Well, I wasn't aware of anything, it was just casual. Penny Trumbull. Possibly the most famous depiction of a groupie in pop culture is Penny Lane from Cameron Crowe's seminal movie Almost Famous. Her glowing blonde ringlets, massive blue eyes, and chic glam rock style have become synonymous with groupie in modern society. But what if I told you that Penny was almost completely based on a real person? Penny Trumbull moved to LA at 18 and soon fell in love with the rock and roll lifestyle. With four other groupies, she formed the Flying Garter Girls, a group that toured the U.S. immersing themselves in the lives of their favorite bands. Again, these girls were high schoolers and part of the initiation process of becoming one of the Garda girls was you had to be in school. 
It was during this time that Trumbull met Crow, and he later decided to depict her as the epitome of a groupie, who was not in it for personal gain, but rather for the love of the music. But after four years of jet-setting around the country, the Flying Garter Girls were burned out and retired from the groupie lifestyle. Trumbull went on to become a competitive fencer, owns a rock and roll ranch, and even had her own vintage of wine called Swallows, because as she puts it, with more than a little tongue-in-cheek, quote, with wine, you either spit or swallow. Cynthia Plaster Caster. How does a young woman obsessed with rock stars separate herself from the pack of other groupies vying for attention? By making plaster molds of the rock star's penises, of course. Cynthia Albritton was a young art student when she hit upon the ingenious idea that would make her famous. And amazingly, one of the biggest rock stars in the world agreed to be her first subject. Jimi Hendrix. After capturing the likeness of Hendrix's heat-seeking missile in 1968, Cynthia went on to cast musicians from The Kinks, Journey, and The Love and Spoonful, among others. All told, she has over a hundred molds of famous rock stars, which begs the question, what does she do with them all? Cynthia's unique talent inspired the songs Plaster Caster by Kiss and Five Short Minutes by Jim Croce. And in 2001, a documentary was made about her exploits in the field of member molding. While perhaps not a groupie in the traditional sense, Cynthia has certainly encountered as many rock and roll rods as anyone on this list. As long as there are talented musicians with appendages, I'll be available for my casting call. Hang about. Let's play role reversal. Let's switch the gender and say a man was going around moulding women's genitalia. Hmm. Sweet Connie Hamsey. Just because you don't live in the glitz and glamour of LA or New York doesn't mean that being a groupie is out of your reach. Just ask sweet Connie Hamsey, who claims to have provided an, uh, oral helping hand to every famous rock star that passed through Little Rock, Arkansas in the 70s and 80s. Her exploits were even documented in the Grand Funk Railroad song, We're an American Band, where, quote, last night in Little Rock put me in a haze. Sweet Connie doing her act, she had the whole show, and that's a fact. Then in 1984, Connie tried to land the biggest fish of all and approached then-Governor Bill Clinton, dropped her bikini top, and asked, what do you think of these? I'm sure Bill didn't mind. Connie has written several tell-all books detailing her escapades, and unlike the rest of her groupie peers, she has kept the party rolling. In the early 2000s, she could still be found backstage at shows in Arkansas applying her trade, even though she was well into her 50s. Damn, Connie. Again, reverse the roles. If a man over 50 was hanging out backstage with young female rockers, hmm. Pamela DeBar. Let's say you want to meet as many rock stars as possible, but don't want to rely on the hit or miss method of hanging around clubs and concerts. What should you do? Become rock star Frank Zappa's nanny, of course. In the 60s and 70s, Pamela DeBar used this position to meet an exhaustive list of rock gods. She reportedly slept with Keith Moon, Jimmy Page, Graham Parsons, Mick Jagger, Jim Morrison, and Waylon Jennings, among others. Wow. She even was a member of Zappa's all-female groupie musical act, The GTOs, which, unsurprisingly, did not succeed. After a failed acting career, DeVar wrote two memoirs about her experiences as a groupie, I'm With The Band and Take Another Little Piece of My Heart, which actress Kate Hudson read to prepare for her iconic role of Penny Lane in the movie Almost Famous. DeVar still trades on her notoriety as one of the most famous groupies of all time, even starting her own fashion line called Groupie Couture in 2013. Just by following the exploits of the groupies alone, we would have to cancel at least the top 10 most prolific rock bands of the entire 70s era. Is this a slippery slope fallacy? And if it is, then it's not just going to be rock and roll of the 70s that's affected. As Marilyn Manson suggested, it could completely destroy all of music and all of movies. We would have no entertainment whatsoever. 
The guys on tour with us were in the room across the hall from me drinking and smoking with a bunch of girls from the show. Most of the girls said they were students from a local university and explained how their parents were very strict with them growing up and it sheltered them as children. That's one thing I've learned being on the road with rappers for many years is that the story you hear from women in each city is pretty much the same. Many come from middle to upper class homes where their parents tried to shelter them and were overprotected, which is how they ended up in a hotel room with a bunch of guys from the Wu-Tang Clan at 4 a.m. Okay. Not- I gotta tell them about the NBA team. What do you want me to say, bitch? <laughs> Go all out. But okay, uh, on my birthday, my birthday is Memorial Day weekend. Uh-huh. On my birthday, I seen them all at Dre's, like this one team. Okay. She's so shy. It's just so cute, <laughs> baby. Like, and I don't know. I was getting fucked in a hotel room. They all pulled up, <laughs> and I sucked their. But the mic down. The whole team. Seven. Seven basketball players in a row. Mm-hmm. How was that? <laughs> I was fucked oh up. God. I didn't fuck any of them, though. She said, what happened to the nuts? Swallowed. All of them? Yeah. And nothing happened? You didn't have, like, a, a weird reaction in your stomach or anything? No, no. I passed that out. That sounds so fun. You're, you're mo- almost making it sound like you were too fucked up to be sucking seven dicks. And also, you were getting no. fucked by somebody else right before this? Yeah, they walked in <laughs> mid me getting fucked. How did they walk the in? Where were you? In the hotel room. So I was fucking, like, someone that works with the team. And I know I know that team because I've hooked up with them before. The but they team. all pulled up. No, not the whole team. <laughs> okay. Like, a few of them. They all just pulled up. They knew I was in there. And they were like, let's get lit. And they were just sitting around the bed. And they just rotated. Wow. Yeah. That's tight. Yo, they all love you. I don't know that we should be shaming women who choose to live this type of lifestyle. But I do wonder, is this girl going to turn around in 20 years' time and decide that what she did and what she admitted to publicly is far too embarrassing to live with and turn around and call it non-consensual? And then, on top of that, could this video, this very video, be used against her when she decides to switch paths? Is she going to get away with saying... Well, I didn't know that it was abuse at the time, or I was too young to know any better. Joining us tonight, we begin this hour with some shocking accusations of sexual assault against a rock icon, legend, that allegedly happened decades ago. A woman identified only as Jane Doe has filed a civil lawsuit claiming that Sting raped her back in 1979 when she was just 15 years old. Now, Sting's real name is Gordon Sumner. Him and two of his band members of the police, Andy Summers and Stuart Copeland, are named in this lawsuit. The woman says she met Sting at a record store promotional event in Scottsdale, Arizona, May 14, 1979. She also says she went to the band's concert later, and when Sting saw her, he asked her to sit on his lap while the opening act was performing. Now, according to the lawsuit, after the concert, Sting invited this 15-year-old girl to a house party in Phoenix where he kissed her and touched her genitals. She says after the party, she thought they were taking her back to the concert venue, but they drove to the band's hotel across the street. And that's where she says Sting raped her. According to the court documents, Jane Doe says she told Sting at least two times that she was 15 years old. Music icon Bob Dylan being accused of sexually abusing a girl more than 50 years ago. In her lawsuit, the now woman claiming that Dylan sexually abused her when she was 12 years old, multiple times over six weeks, back in 1965. The suit claims that Dylan established an emotional connection with the girl while giving her drugs and alcohol so the abuse could continue. The woman claims that Dylan's threats of physical violence left her emotionally scarred and physical da- phys- psychologically damaged to this day. Dylan's spokesperson says the 56-year-old's claims is untrue and will be vigorously defended. The suit was filed just one day before a New York law extending the statute of limitations for child sexual abuse cases uh, expired. This morning, Morgan Freeman is fighting back, his attorney demanding a retraction from CNN, which first reported eight accusations of sexual harassment against the Oscar-winning actor last week. We have zero confidence 
in CNN's reporting to believe that any of this happened. In a letter to network chief Jeff Zucker, Freeman's attorney lambasted the CNN report as the product of malicious intent, falsehoods, sleight of hand, an absence of editorial control, and journalistic malpractice. CNN later said in a statement it stands by its reporting and will respond forcefully to any attempt by Mr. Freeman or his representatives to intimidate us from covering this important public issue. Oh, do I wish I was there. <laughs> That remark at the center of one allegation from one of the co-authors of CNN's report, who says Freeman made that comment about her pregnant body during an interview. Right when I walked into the room, he began to make sexually suggestive comments to me. As an entertainment reporter for over a decade, it was unlike anything I've ever experienced. Freeman's lawyers say the tape shows Freeman made the I wish I was there comment about a story told by a co-star, not the reporter Chloe Malas. They say Malas reported the incident to HR, which investigated her claim and concluded it was not supported by the facts. Freeman's attorney also calls out CNN for allowing a journalist making accusations to also be a writer on the story. Ms. Malas baited and prodded supposed witnesses to say bad things about Mr. Freeman and tried to get them to confirm her bias bias against him, Freeman's attorneys write. The CNN story went beyond the reporter's complaint. Five anonymous accusations came from film sets, press tours, and in the offices of Freeman's own production company. One woman accusing Freeman of trying to lift up her skirt and asking if she was wearing underwear. The attorneys for Freeman say one of the other women named in the CNN report, Tyra Martin, has since said she was not harassed. I'm sorry for anyone that's had an unfortunate experience or feels harassed or um, assaulted. That wasn't my experience with Morgan Freeman. Before his attorney's letter Tuesday, Freeman twice apologized to anyone he may have upset for behavior he says didn't come across the way he intended, saying in part, it is not right to equate horrific incidents of sexual assault with misplaced compliments or humor. Old. Elvis was 24, right? Mm -hmm. How did your parents allow a 14-year-old teenager, baby, to be with this then superstar of... It was not easy on my parents. You know, first of all, it was just an innocent meeting. And of course, you know, I was excited and I was, I was reluctant because I didn't think they'd ever let me go. But it was just a one-time opportunity. That's all they thought it would be. I never expected him to ask me back. They never expected him to ask me back. But Elvis did ask you back and you saw him again and again. And you would get home very late at night and be exhausted the next day when you had to go to school. Mm -hmm. And your parents let you go again and again. It was um, a very protective relationship from the very beginning. I don't know what it was about him, but he kind of took me under his arm and uh, um, nour nourished me in many ways. You write in your book, you're 14, Elvis would take me into his bedroom and then we would kiss long, deep, passionate kisses and his caresses would leave me weak with desire. <laughs> yes? When you had trouble getting up for classes, Elvis gave you Dexedrine. Mm -hmm. right, first time you'd seen pills. I didn't know what was going on as far as, you know, um, pills or what they were, sleeping pills. I mean, he gave them to me to be helpful. What do you think attracted a 24-year-old star to a 14-year-old inexperienced, or am, I, or am I telling you just as I say that, is that what attracted him to you? The inexperienced, yes. I think um, Elvis had been around Hollywood already. He had already seen Hollywood quote-unquote starlets. So I think in his own mind, he thought, well, I'll just um, be with someone and uh, teach her as, uh, as it comes. And during the day, you got up and went to high school? came home in the afternoon, you said sometimes you'd crawl into bed with Elvis at three or four in the afternoon and he was just getting up and didn't even know you were gone. Mm -hmm. I worked that out. <laughs> and then you stayed up most of the night? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And took pills to go to sleep? I had to because we got home so early in the morning he would sleep until three or four in the afternoon. And even though he wanted you virginal and pure, he dressed you sequin, <laughs> shiny material, oh. low cut, slid up the side. I just point out that I am not condoning or supporting any behaviour by either side of this divide. I'm basically pointing out that applying today's standards retroactively to standards that we didn't have in the past is culturally destructive. You have no argument from me that there are certain parts of culture that we do need to change. But where I do disagree is this burn it all to the ground approach.
It was, it's a tough spot to be in, especially if you really do appreciate and want to be a support of, of the side that seems the angriest and the anger is being directed at you. And I sort of decided, well, I'll just stay quiet for, for, you know, mostly I've talked about it a little bit to honor that, like, okay, this is someone else's experience of this. And it is not my experience, but I, you have to respect that someone else had an experience and take that to heart and allow for it to be as possible as your memory of that experience. I, I think on the one hand, it's like a sweeping judgment. Mm -hmm. And on the other hand, there's been a lot of talk about, you know, can we even make these kinds of distinctions between the worst cases and sort of what is perceived as the tamest examples of it. And I think that there's some truth in that, you know, of that, like, it isn't about, oh, well, this isn't so bad. And that's really horrible. It's that it is systemic. It is accepted culturally at its tamest manifestation of it and that's worst and that it all needs to be turned on its head eradicated not allowed for right and that kind of like lightning bolt i think is effective the lesson that i had to sort of learn and, and be humble about was i was the producer i was technically the boss and having a set uh, that I didn't even know I was on a set. I was making a kind of a quote unquote home movie with a friend that grew and grew and grew. There was a ton of partying mm -hmm. because that was the content of this docu at times documentary, at times mockumentary. And it, so it was. Yeah, you're recording everything. Recording right? everything. It's not, it's not a clear cut undertaking from the get. It was confusing for everybody and it was deliberately so. And that's my responsibility. Mm hmm. The intention was to have the, the crew as a part of the movie. I don't know how much they knew they were a part of the movie. And and I had, finally, I had my dad play Joaquin's father mm -hmm. in the movie. I had And he didn't really know exactly what was going on. <laughs> right. And, you know, and, um, so it, it, it was a big mess. And it was not something that I would do again. I really wouldn't, I would be way smarter, more sensible, more sensitive to, like, it being a workplace if I were to, to try to do this again. And I think that, like, y you can't change the world if you don't let the world change you. Uh, I don't pretend to be changing the world in any way, but I just mean that, like, you aren't going to change the world's opinion of you. You aren't going to make anything good or put it into the world in a meaningful way if it's you're just set on transmit. you got to be on receive sometimes. And, yeah. Uh, you got to be open to people saying, like, no, man, you're not hearing us. That was out of control. Is this not a mature approach to the issues at hand? So this came out when the whole announcement that Johnny Depp was going to be the moon man for MTV and the VMAs, I believe it is. Yeah, the Video Music Awards. Okay, so let's get into this. But first, let's read the actual announcement. Johnny Depp has played many roles, but never a moon man. And that's all going to change at the upcoming MTV Video Music Awards with a planned surprise appearance from the movie star. Now, that's, that's amazing. We, we all know Johnny Depp's winning. He's been winning. He's going to continue to win. The only thing, man, is that these Amber Heard supporters, I, I, the part that pisses me off is that these people are going so hard. They're, they're doing, they're talking about death threats. They're talking about hoping that he gets in a car crash. You can see it right there. And Twitter is doing nothing about it. Hopefully he gets in a car crash on the way there. <laughs> Can't wait to see him dead. Why can't he just die? Can't wait for him to fall off the stage, break his neck, and D-word forever. See, the part that pisses me off, that gets me upset, okay, is because if Johnny Depp supporters said that, they would be banned instantly. Any, any kind of bullshit like that. But because it's Amber Heard supporters, because these people are on that side of the establishment, of the mainstream media, it's okay for them to do this shit. His team is desperate to make Depp relevant again. Wh whatever. N whatever. Fine. Blech. Not even. Outside courts before the backlash about what he did to Amber starts again. They're running out of time and they know it. What the fuck are you talking about, you fucking moron? Ugh, stir Gussa on Twitter. What a fucking idiot. Please protect all young girls before he looks for a new girlfriend to abuse. What do you mean, young girl? She was 24 years old. What are you talking about, young girls? So now a 24-year-old is young? 
well, hold on, wait, 2012, because she's 36 or 37 right now, 12 years ago they were together, it's 2010, 11, right, something like that, so you're trying to tell me you think a young girl is 24 years old? I mean, and if they were together for a few years, we'll say a few, which is three, that would make her 21 if they met when, you know, at the beginning of a few years, which is three. So, hey, Thurl, uh, what is this? Thurl Wall X Solo, you fucking moron. Please protect young girls. What are you talking about? Why are you saying that as if this has anything to do with pedophilia or anything like that? She's She wasn't young. She was 24. That's not young. And this is another thing. Why is this? Ha why does this happen? It, it, the same thing happened with Evan, Evan Rachel Wood. They wanted to pretend like 18 is so young. 18. Oh, oh, that's so young. She's a little baby. Dude, the, these women aren't young. I can understand if these women were 16 or 14, like some of the stuff we've heard with Jeffrey fucking Epstein. Okay. And Amber Heard as well. She was with a, a minor naked with a minor. I could understand those things. What you need to do is a thorough wall X solo. You need to keep young girls away from Amber Heard because she's been naked around young girls before. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. I muted this, but I'm glad to see it stroked a nerve. Why do they always do, dude? They always do this. I muted this, but I'm glad to see it stroke a nerve for the wife beater stands. Dude, you can't come out and put a tweet out and then you get fucking roasted in your tweet and then you come and cover ass trying to say well i'm glad that i struck a nerve Ugh. stroke a nerve you don't even know how to say the damn phrase right i'm glad to see i stroke a nerve you fucking moron uh they're not fucking very smart on that side are you uh, Taylor Swift's starved, neglected something? What the fuck is this? I swear if any of you even smile to this rapist, Taylor Swift, Tree Payne, Olivia Rodrigo, Conan Gray. Okay, I know who Taylor Swift and Olivia R Rodrigo are, but I don't know who those other two are. So now essentially this person is saying that if any of those four celebrities, singers, I believe they all four of them are, if any of those four singers, if they smile and look at Johnny Depp, then this person what you swear what what are you gonna do Ooh, oh no taylor swift starved neglected something some moron on twitter is gonna do something if these celebrities smile at johnny Depp. what kind of stupid shit is that and you want to know what this what this lends to it lends to the idea that these people believe they're so important they believe they're so important to society that they could tag millionaire billion well, i don't know about billionaires millionaire artists on a tweet and they think that Taylor Swift is going to see their post. Or Olivia Rodrigo is going to see their tweet. Come on, man. You're a fucking nobody. Why on earth would you think that these people... Oh, well, I better not, I better not smile at Johnny Depp because Taylor Swift starved, neglected something. On Twitter, she told me, I swear, oh, oh well, we better not smile at Johnny Depp. Oh, fucking idiot. And then this girl, what is this, Gaga R9, canceled the whole thing. And have you noticed that there's a lot of these stan accounts from other artists that they stan other artists, which there has been reports already that all these artists like Lady, uh, Lady Gaga, uh, uh, Taylor Swift, they all have bots that are also stans. So it's kind of funny that you're seeing these for Amber Heard because Amber Heard's PR has bought Twitter uh, profiles and Twitter likes and all that kind of stuff. So really you can literally see it happening where the paid, uh, the paid bots and the paid uh, Twitter profiles for Lady Gaga, for Taylor Swift, they're coming out for Amber Heard. And it's obvious. It is so obvious. Why? Because these are the ones that are paid for. Praying he gets COVID. Dude. COVID? Really? Who the fuck was that? Rose all <laughs> Rose only fans. <laughs> Look, man, go worry about your only fans. Don't worry about Johnny Depp, all right? Don't worry about your only fans. <laughs> I need someone to push him off the stage. W D Zants. But tell me how men's careers get ruined by false accusations. What do you 
Okay, so we're gonna go into that one for a little bit. Let's let's roast this fucking moron, Stan Terramoto. Let's roast this moron. From 2016 until 20, what was it? 2021. Johnny Depp lost everything. What do you mean? He his his ruin his career was ruined. It was over. It was gone. He had nothing, and the only reason he's back is because he fucking won. What are you talking about? You can't say that now because you're losing, uh, Stan, Stan Terramoto, you fucking moron. Oh, look, and it says Camilla. Oh, my God. Really? It says Camilla right there. And these are the people. Really? Ugh. From Aerosol. Dude, these, these profiles can't be real. Come on, man. These profiles cannot be real. Aerosol? I mean, I know what they're saying. Seoul, like, like South Korea, I believe. They're really going to let this groomer... What? Why is he a groomer? How is Johnny Depp a groomer near teenagers? How is Johnny Depp a groomer? He didn't meet her when she was in her teenage years. He didn't get, go out with a teenager. What the fuck are you morons, morons talking about? And I'm going to say it again. Aerosol? Come on, aerosol? You know, like a, like the like the whatever those aerosol cans. What is it? Potpourri stuff? Come on, these can't be real people. These really can't be real people because something like that, it, it doesn't go. You know what I mean? They're really going to let this groomer in your teenagers. He literally is an abusive wife beater, talentless, limp dick depth. So why him? Better keep. So <laughs> hold on, let's go back to that. So why him? So why him? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, aerosol. <laughs> him oh, like that like that meme he just can't keep getting away with this <laughs> he just can't keep getting away with this what a fucking losers man these people better keep him away from k-pop artists they're already suffering enough from dancing these brain dead awards okay i guess what the so you're a k-pop stan is that what you want we don't want jo um hashtag we don't want johnny deb at the vmas okay that's a little long so it's probably not going to catch on. Sorry, aerosol. Hell resident New York. This person's from New York. Sorry for my subscribers that are from New York, but you know, I guess I guess I would be talking shit about New York City, not necessarily the whole the whole state of New York, because some of New York is pretty great, like Albany, you know, the places where it's more country. I really and truly hope this is some bullshit, because if not, then I have to ask, how fucking desperate are you for ratings MTV? Okay, now, I wanted to show you this, because I followed a comment, literally, on one of Amber Heard's supporters, on one of their tweets, okay? And it was from, the comment was from this profile, you can see it right there. The name of the profile is Female Dating Strategy Max, <laughs> okay? There's the name of the profile. Now you have to see, th this is what we're talking about here. That's the name, but you have to see the content. Only mistake she made was not hitting him more. Should men lie about their height? Oh, should men who lie about their height be charged with rape? Yes, always 80%. <laughs> what? Lying, okay, I will admit lying about your height is a bit stupid because, I mean, I'm a tall dude anyway, so why would I lie? But, you know, shorter dudes, if you're like 5'8", and then you say you're 5'11", if you're 5'10", and then you you say you're six foot or something, okay, I, I guess I could understand. But, you know, well, that's a little much. Should men who lie about their height be charged with rape? Come on, man, that's a fucking little much, isn't it? Jeez. Next one, are all men violent abusers? This is the thing that, that Amber Heard supporters, this is what they do. This is this is what they do? Are you serious? And then look, it says, out of 20 votes, 40% all of them are, 20%, 95% are abusers. And 90% plus are abusers, 40% of people. Jeez, man. That is complete crap. Everything against Amber Heard was fabricated by the New World Order? <laughs> It is the first stepping stone to their goal to turn women into breeding slaves for the rich during the Great Reset.
Don't believe all women. Believe only women. Men naturally lie, whereas women do not. <laughs> Lying comes from the Y chromosome, as does violence. And they got ratioed to shit. Women who do things for men are totally pick me's. Okay, first of all, a pick me is a girl that like wants to do things for women so they can notice her and they can be attractive to men. I mean, wants to do things for men, excuse me, and they can be attractive to men and they they want to say the right things. So the the Gen Z insult is calling those type of women a pick me. Imagine being a female lawyer and defending a man. Oh. Now you can't even defend a man. Imagine doing anything for a man. Men don't deserve anything but to serve women. This has to be parody. This has to be satire. This has to be a fake account. This can't be real. I can't believe that there's a woman out there that's typing these and writing them. And it's called Female Dating Strategy Max. It is not possible for a woman to abuse a man. Women are never violent nor lie. <laughs> wow. Holy shit. Violence and lying is a male trait. Again, with that Y chromosome crap. Wow. Queen survey. How much money did your man done give you this month? What? What? A lot of these aren't, they don't have any engagement because they're so fucking stupid. And that's why when I saw them, I was like, oh my God, I have to show my subscribers this because these are too good. Women don't abuse men. They stand up to the patriarchy. Oh my God. Whether that involves physical violence or not doesn't matter. Women are permitted to be violent against men, and they should be. Hashtag me too. Men have abused women for centuries. It's about time strong women start abusing them back. Sorry, not sorry. There is indeed a stark contrast between men who want to make things right again and the feminists who want to burn it all down. Anyway, that's my expose on the burn it all down approach versus finding some balance so that men and women can live in harmony. And to top it off, I'm going to chuck a link in the description that I want you all to watch about role reversal which I've brought up several times in this video and I think it's pertinent to the conversation. Enjoy. You aren't going to change the world's opinion of you. You aren't going to make anything good or put it into the world in a meaningful way if it's you're just set on transmit. You got to be on receive sometimes. Yeah. Like, you got to be open to people saying like, "No, man, you're not hearing us. That was out of control." 